It's the Sunday morning screaming memes with your host, Bandana J. Morning, everybody. It's October 2nd, 2022. Right now, hit the like, the share, everything you can do right now. Pop on there to hit the button to follow, share, subscribe, whatever it takes. Stay in tune for these shows. We got a lot coming up here in October. I think you guys are going to like it. You know, uh, just stay tuned. So hit the like, hit the share, hit the subscribe, do the like. It don't cost you nothing just to like a page. You know, stay in tune, keep in touch with what's going on. I got a kind of a cool little mellow show today, nothing too thing like last week. I got a, a little bit of a Halloween bandana on. I got my black cat showing. So, I mean, I like to play around with Halloween. I'm not going to do no witchy poo stuff or nothing like that. But, you know, I like to see the monsters and all that and dress up a little bit. But we're going to do things in stages. We've got a whole month for that. Plus, we got uh, the Halloween and we got suit coat coming up. So, we're going to be doing a little, a little bit of everything this month. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, even my wife, she's going to be doing stuff on it. So, uh, well, on her pages, maybe even popping in doing some, some on mine. But, stay tuned. Here we go. Let's get the, let's get the shows going here. Let me get my stuff situated. Okay. Okay, I got my first one up here. Let me just move me and make me just a tad bigger. Oh, that might be too big. Alright, this way people can see me. Okay, now this is a blast from the past. A lot of you women out there will remember this. It was called Tiger Beat. Uh, it had all the teen boys in it. Whoever owned this magazine made a fortune because, God, every girl bought it. My sister bought them. Everybody bought them. Well, you know, but it was mostly all the girls that bought them with all these uh, boy actors in them and singers, and it was wild. Uh, most of them, you look at them now, they're a wreck, <laughs> even myself, but... It was a big hit, this magazine. I don't even know if it's still around. I mean, uh, someone should be really bringing this back and uh, really bringing these stars back to where they were, you know, these new stars. You know, are they even into this? I don't even know, you know. But this was a big hit during the 70s and 80s with my sister and her friends. I remember all these magazines. Right? Hell, I don't even know who these guys are, but I still know just from the magazines. But, yeah, this was a hit. But whoever was publishing that stuff, they made a killer money. That's all I can say. They made killer. Then we got uh, Boba Fett Mandalorian Whiskey. I don't know if this is real or not. I seen it online. I thought it was funny because you always just got to quote Boba Fett. I'm just a simple man making his way through the galaxy, and <laughs> evidently he's making booze. So you can't <laughs> you can't get any more uh, the simple man making his way through the galaxy, you know. But that's a great thing right there, and uh, you know I just, I just saw that. And I thought it was really cool, you know. It's a Mandalorian whiskey, you know. I got friends who are Star Wars fans, and they they ought to get a kick out of it. Like I said, I don't know if it's real or what, you know. It might be. Who the hell knows. <laughs> Now, this, I go through this a lot here where I live. I got cats. I got 10 cats, you know. Uh, they're all taken care of. They're all fixed. I believe in spay and neutering if you don't, not breeding animals or nothing like that. So spay or neuter your, your pets, you know what I mean, uh, so that, that you don't have a, a lot of unwanted pets, you know. But this is true. I go to this as a, your cat is watching too much. Master Chef. Mine don't put no leaves on it. There's always grass on them. But they'll bring 
dead mice, dead birds. They bring damn everything around here. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I go through this a lot. And it's kind of a compliment. So, if you have cats, you ought to notice. You know, and people who don't, if a cat brings you something dead, it's sharing its food with you. It trusts you. It sees you as an equal, you know. And, you know, it, it wants to be around you, you know. You know, what if I had a... Don't even know what... You know, but... I gotta do my stuff these ways, so so I could see them too. I could use a different uh, different streaming thing, which I might start to do. I'm not sure, you know what I mean. So I've been talking that with Gail, you know. Okay, then we got bottles of whiskey. You know what I mean. Plus, my life is not that private anyway. I don't care if people see these things pop up. If you ask me, I would tell you. You know, I watch a lot of weird stuff. So, but. The TikTok things that pop up, I don't understand them, but that's another story for another day. But this is uh, kegs of, of booze. Maybe it's the Mandalorian whiskey. How the hell I know, you know. Maybe that's how it comes in. But I just thought this was great because that's the way, you know, you actually see booze and, you know, it's in kegs. <laughs> you know, so I thought that was pretty cool, you know. Then I saw this joke. I got friends of mine, um, my friend Rose and... My other friend Arnaldo out there in New Jersey, um, I think they would get a kick out of this. You know, the pirate goes, Doctor Carl, how do you, how do you think my teeth get so, so yeller? And he said, Do you smoke or drink coffee? And he goes, I drinks it. You know what I mean? So it's guy kind of funny if you know, because it is like kind of a funny thing. You know, do you? I have, a, I had to read that a couple of times, and then it kind of dawned on me what the. <laughs> Yeah, I said, oh yeah, because if someone says, do you smoke, I got to remember this one for, for my doctor when I go, and you know, he says, do you smoke a drink, I, you know, coffee, I'm going to say, well, I drink it, you know, <laughs> so, but I know, like I said, I don't know, we got some people out there who like pirate stuff, and I seen that, and I thought they'll like it, then I had this other one, he said, it's a Webster's Toast, another day, another bender, no retreat, no surrender, you know, so, you know, if you like to have a few beers and all that, try to remember that one. You know, it's a toast, you know. Another day, another bender, no retreat, no surrender. You know, so get out there and have a few. Relax relax your nerves in life with everything that's going on. I forgot my little emoji thing out here to put so I could focus my eyes better, but that's okay. Then we have... Remember when we had to smack the TV because the channel wasn't coming in clearly? I feel that way far too many times. Uh, far, I feel that way about far too many people. Yeah. I mean, years ago, we, we, like people my age and, and, and young, a few years younger, you know, used to have rabbit ear antennas, you know, and, or the TV, and you have to, you didn't really have to hit it to make it the hell come in. I mean, people just did that out of frustration, like that's why we're smacking people now. But you would hit the TV, and it'll come into focus, you know, a little bit better. So it was, you know, but you really, the hitting it didn't really, <laughs> the hitting didn't actually bring in nothing but damage more your TV where you had to hit it. So, because <laughs> you made just making everything damn loose in it. So, eh, <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny, you know. But yeah, you want to smack people because they don't come in too clear. And even though you're smacking them, their brains will still smash around. You know? <laughs> then I thought this was. Cool. I got my ticket for tonight. Stay home, do nothing, and go to bed early. You know, I, I've been trying to rest up a little bit. I had to go to the doctors early this week, and also I thought it was pretty cool. You know, I thought, I thought about trying to make these and selling them. I thought they were, like, kind of funny. You know what I mean? You know, couch, general admission, you know. So those are, like, kind of funny little giveaway things to people, you know. <laughs> but I, I got a kick out of that, you know. Then it says, Take the chip off your shoulder and place it with a kitten. You'll feel a lot better. I've had a lot of cats fall on me like that, fall asleep on me like that. They didn't fall on me like that. Maybe they did. Maybe that's why I got so many rain cats and dogs. But I had so many kittens like that fall asleep on me. Even my bigger cats now, they'll do that when they come in and they'll, they'll sleep on me and it drives me crazy. But, you know, it, it's fun, you know, to have them sit with you. They come up there for the warmth and all that. So it's a cute picture, you know, and, you know, yeah, it's like calm down, people, you know. If you can love an animal, you can love people even though they drive you nuts, you know. 
So keep that in mind. You know, I thought that was a cool little picture for that. Now, this one was uh, enjoy the salmon patties. I love them. You know what I mean? And I, I don't have a can right now of the salmon, but I'm going to get a couple here and come next week. You know what I mean? I'm going to get to the store and try to get a couple of cans of salmon to make salmon patties. Basically, it's just eggs, breadcrumb, some seasoning in it in the can. Now, if you use some of this pink salmon, be careful because years ago when you would get it, it would have the bones in the skin so you had to pick out the bones and all that sometime i made it with the bones and all it didn't bother me but you know be careful you know but you don't want to pick out you can get already cleaned salmon and make it with that so that's great too so you know make sure you you know you take care of your salmon but it's a great meal don't use a lot of oil in your frying pan so you you lose a lot of the benefit of the salmon so go a little bit easy on the oil and and fry them in the frying pan, you know what I mean, and they'd be great, a little bit of butter in with the oil makes it nice, but you know, they'll come out looking like that, they're not a picture perfect thing, if you're getting that in a restaurant, a picture perfect looking thing, I could tell you for a fact, that's store bought, that's, they're buying that stuff in bulk, handmade patties look nothing like that, they look like this picture, they're odd shape and all, but keep them flat, don't make them humped in the middle, because then it doesn't cook right, so keep them flat, or indent the middle just a little bit, and then it'll cook all even, I mean, there's little tricks to make it like a lot better out there for yourselves to enjoy, you know what I mean, but it's a great meal if you like fish, you should have to know how to make salmon patties, recipes are everywhere, I think they're even on the can, you know, but it's super, super easy to make. If, if you could fry an egg, you could make salmon patties and be healthy. But just go a little bit easy on the oil and all. Don't, you don't want to saturate it with the oil when you're cooking. You just want to crisp it up. Yeah, and because they cook kind of fast, too. I thought this was a cool little bar. I wanted to get pallets this year to make some furniture and all. I didn't get a chance to because I, I, I hurt my back a little bit. You know what I mean? So I couldn't do the stuff I wanted to do. But I kind of like this little rustic bar look one. So I saved this picture for myself for down the road. I like to make that. It also looks like a suit coat uh, place for uh, my religion. It looks kind of like that in a way. You know what I mean? But minus the bar on it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, but it's a, it's like a hut type thing, so you can make that with it, but that's a real cool looking little thing, um, that might be a, a plan I use for that, you know, I kind of like that one, then I thought this was cool, uh, Wild Olive, my wife Gail, she likes owls, and these are like all fun way you can make stuff, you know, hanging them around your yard for decoration, give them away as gifts, be just two round things and a big round thing, <laughs> and you got an owl and something flat underneath so it looks like it's sitting, you know. So all you need is four pieces, a stick, two dishes, and a big dish, and you got an owl. <laughs> Nothing spectacular making an owl. Now, this, I, I don't touch much on religion with these, but I, I thought this was good. The purpose of life is not stuff. It is. It is relationship. First God, then others. You know, I don't know why they put that small in there, you know, but I guess to make sure you read it, you know. But that's true. You know, make sure you have a good relationship with, you know, Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit, and then with others, you know. Don't try to overwhelm yourself with friends. Jesus only had three close friends, you know. So, I mean, that's about everybody can handle a certain extent. So you'll have three close friends. You'll have friends that come and go, but you always have about three good close friends. Right now, I got like three good close friends. Uh, the fourth one, my friend Bobby, I think he'd rather cut my throat right now. <laughs> I hope that fuck is this. Yeah. But, you know, I know I pissed him off. So he ain't talking to me right now. So if anybody knows Bob, tell me. Get online, you know. But my other friends, you know, I got some old friends that I still talk with online. Actually, more than three, you know what I mean? But they're, they're always commenting and liking my stuff, so I appreciate that. That shows that they're good friends. Especially, like, uh, my friend George, you know, just talking about him for a second. You know, we've been through a lot together growing up. And, you know, he's he posts up. I like it. I'll make comments on him. You know, um, my friend's sister named Rose, you know, she's always posting crazy stuff. And I'm always saying crazy stuff to her. If that person ain't a friend, I don't know who the hell is. And I, <laughs> I mean, we say some crazy shit back to one another. But then I got my friend Arnaldo. Uh, he's a good old friend from years ago. He don't say much, and I kind of tease him for that. 
I have a friend named Teresa and her friend and her sister Irene, two great women that are uh, that are around in this world, you know. So I'm um, good friends with them, you know. And I like when I see they got really good posts and good things happen in their lives. It makes me very happy. So make friends, have a good relationship with God. He'll give you good friends. You know what I mean? And I have a good relationship with friend as my wife too. She she I think a little bit on Bob's side. Rather right? kill me sometimes. <laughs> You know, so, but, eh, hey, what the hell? You know, it is what it is. You, know, you gotta, hey, God gonna please everybody either. He's gonna please everybody either. So, eh, hey, have some fun out there. But find him first in your life. And I thought this was kind of cool, you know. Uh, they, someone took these little black cats and made them look like bats. You know, then George stole my post after I, <laughs> after I did this. He took my post. <laughs> But it's, as I said, it's kind of funny. But I thought this was really funny because Gail likes black cats. I got f four of them here. Well, two got a little bit of white, but two are totally black. And, um, you know, and, and then the others are black and white. It's, you know, full black and whites, you know. And, but, yeah, I thought this was really cool, really funny, you know what I mean? Like little black flying bat cats, you know. <laughs> <laughs> then this is so true talking about cats that's a second more you know if Dracula had a cat he'd be sleeping outside the coffin we got a black cat he's an old he's the oldest one his name is Pinky you know when he was first born his black hair was so fine all you saw was his skin you know what I mean his hair was not even fully black yet and um he looked like a pinky he like uh what you would call like a baby hamster or something like that he kind of looked like that almost you know i mean that's how light colored he was so we called him i called him pinky then and the whole thing still stakes today when people find out it's an all black cat they're like he's black i'm like yeah but when he was small he didn't look like that at all <laughs> uh, he looked totally different but he's a, he's uh about six years old uh, no, maybe a little bit more than that, uh, maybe seven years old. You know, he, he's an older black cat, and he, he's cool, you know what I mean? But he gets annoying. He's like a damn grumpy old man, you know what I mean? He get on your nerves sometimes. He'll want to sit where he wants to sit and do what he wants to do. So he gets annoying, but he's cool. Then, like I, a lot of you folks know that I like to grill outside, cook outside, and all that. I do have one of those things. I got it hanging up over here on the side. It's a little bit different, but same type of thing. Now, this is what you could do to toast bread in the morning or in the evening. You know, when you're out there grilling hot dogs, you want something a little bit. You don't got to burn your toast doing this. So, like, I, like I've said it in the past, if you're cooking on fire outside or whatever... Watch what you're doing. If you're looking to socialize, don't do these things it, until you get well accustomed to doing them. But if you want to do these things, take your time, do them, and watch them. Move them around and you know, toast your bread lightly. It comes out great. It's better than if you toast it in a toaster and then you have toasted bread, you know, either with your meal. You can maybe put it on a hot dog if you don't toast it too much you know what i mean because it might not bend right but if you're looking for like having toast or garlic toast with your dinner outside you put the two pieces together with the garlic spread in the middle and you move it around you move it around you know so like i said i'll always tell you until you get comfortable doing these things if you're looking to socialize while cooking don't do these things you're going to burn it it's going to come out nasty you're going to get disappointed work it do it. If people talk to you to say, give me a minute, get this done. You'll be well worth the effort. They're going to love you for it. You know, you'd rather not have them talk to you for that minute than talk to you all night praising you. But always, you know, give the, the glory to God for having have a good meal. But, you know, take your time. But this is a great idea. So if you have one of these, use it for different things. Be creative. Even if, you, you know, you think, hey, I want to try this. When no one's around and you're cooking at your house, try it out. You know what I mean? Because it is a great thing. You can even do that on a grill. If you have a gas grill and all, just move it around. Just stand out there and move it. You don't want to leave it because it'll cook quick, you know. But move it around, watch it, turn it, and watch it. I have made big, long pieces of uh, bread, like sandwich bread, on the grill, you know. But I watched it, and we took care of it, you know. I get very fussy. I watch my stuff. You got to watch when you're cooking outdoors, though, and doing certain things. Then I thought this was funny. Like I like the 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 directional signs, the one way sign. You no know, Count Dracula Drive, Howl Addy, Bull Boulevard, Wicked Way, 
Wicked Witch Way, Trick or Treat Street, R.I.P. Road, Haunted Highway, Cem Cemetery Circle is the bottom one. You know, so it's a fun thing, you know. If you got extra wood around and you're going to have... Now, in my religion, I don't really get with the Halloween anymore, you know what I mean? But if the kids know it's just a fun thing, just going to have fun, you know, we ain't going to stop praying to the devils and all this shit, you know. This is a fun thing. You can make it other things to say, you know what I mean? Clown, court, or whatever, you know what I mean? You know, Pilgrim Park, or, you know, you can change the words. I mean, you know, the, the purpose of it is just to have the words, so it's funny, you know what I mean? So think of funny things if you're trying to do this for other reasons, you know. You could even do it during um, kind of, you know, uh, Christmassy time too, you know what I mean? You could do something like that. But it's a fun thing. P adults get a kick out of it. Every so you don't got to put the spooky names. You can make them j jollier names if you want, you know what I mean? Cowboy, Cowboy Circle, you know. Aardvark Avenue, you know, you can do all sorts of other things, you know, so be creative, so I thought, that's one of the purposes of my show here, you know, I make fun of memes, but I try to educate people to do other things, because these memes, like, like I said in my very first show, and I always say, they have a lot of purposes, if you really look at some of them, so, so, some are garbage, yeah, but some are really good that you could do a lot of different things with, like something like this, you know, so if you're having a church group over, or friends over, you know, friends with kids, or you're having a birthday party <laughs> for adults or that, you know, I don't know what this, I don't even know who this TikTok thing is, but, well, I went the wrong way, you know, I get these weird things, you know, I was on I think it was Instagram. I was getting a whole bunch of weird people. I should have put a road sign on my on my page. Go here, go there, go here, go there, you know. But, <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of funny. But that's a lot of fun, so keep that in mind. Then, he's one of my favorite uh, directors. I, I'm not a fan of all his work, but the way he thought, you know, Ed Wood. Now, this was done by Tim, uh, Tim Burton, made the movie about him. You know, it was how he thought. You know, yes, he might have dressed as a woman and all of this stuff, but he, you know, he was, he had an issue. You know, whatever you want to call it. That's not the point I'm getting at. He followed his dream. He, he, he wanted to make movies. He did the best he could with what he had. That is everybody, and I mean, damn, everybody who's online right now doing live streaming, videos, anything. We're all like Ed Wood. One way or another. We're all like an Ed Wood doing this stuff. He did it without finances. He raised finances. All so a lot of us are like Ed Wood. Yeah, you know I mean I mean, you know, I'm not saying any of his weird entrancities and shit, you know, that's not what I'm talking about. What he was trying to do. You know what I mean? That was the thing. You know what I mean? You wanna look at that, whatever. I don't look at that. I look at what the man was trying to accomplish. You know, he did he liked sci-fi movies. He made them the best he could. I have seen work online by individuals that are awesome. I mean, really, really awesome. And they don't even get no credit for it. Same like this guy did. I mean, yeah, his movies weren't the greatest. But they do awesome work for what little stuff they have. It's amazing. Even myself, I'm not saying I, I do great work. I do do certain things really good with what I have. It's the same thing. Like he makes a comment in the movie. He he, he wrote, directed, and starred in his movie. Like him and Orson Welles. I'm doing the same thing here. I am I write, I direct it, and I'm in it. A lot of you live streamers and people like that, take pride in what you do. You're doing the same as these men did. Just on a smaller scale with different audiences. More direct audiences. So... That's why I like this show. I mean, watch it and get that out of it if you can. Don't worry. The rest of the stuff is incidental. You know what I mean? But that's what I think about that. Now you know. <laughs> yeah, sorry to... I diverse. But now going back to cooking for one more time. This is a great fire pit. I always admired it. Because you have your fire there. You got your cooking areas. And then you can also take some of your coals and, and, and grill something. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty simple fire pit. You can get most of those stones at any home center type thing, you know, but it's a great fire pit. So, if you have to snapshot that somehow, save it for yourself. It's a great picture, 
And if you want to start cooking outdoors, you know, you have a little area to do it in that don't take up enough, a lot of room. It's from what I can always gather, it's probably about six to seven feet long, approximately. You know what I mean? Give or take, maybe no more than eight and probably about almost three feet wide, give or take, but no more than that. You know what I mean? So it all depends upon the size of the stones you get. You know, some are 12, some are 16 or 18 inches. So, you know, depending what size stones you're using. And then just, not, it'll cost you a couple of bucks to make, but the outcome will be um, very rewarding. Me, I cook on a fire pit and all of this stuff, a metal fire pit and all. I mean, I don't do that, not yet. I want to, though, because I think that's an awesome setup, a simple, good, quick, multi-versatile setup. Yeah, I mean, very good. Then I get a kick out of this. It says, hey, kid, have you, ha hey, kid, have you ever heard, have you ever seen Tombstone? She said, yeah, my mom puts pepperoni on ours, and he gives that look like, oh, you know. I think that's, like, classic, you know. You know, I, I'm a big fan of the movie Tombstone. Big thumbs up. You know, Val Kilmer should have got an Oscar for playing Doc Holliday, you know, some way, somehow. But awesome movie. But I think this is a real funny meme because it just shows that some people don't know what you're talking about. And I don't think it's all age difference either. It's just some people don't know what the hell you're talking about. I experience that a lot, you know. Now, that kind of... Goes with me, you know, uh, Happy New, the, the Jewish Happy New Year uh, is now 5,783. You know, it's, it's, to the layman these days, it's 2022. I, you know, I'm Masonic, as everybody knows, and we just celebrated Rosh Hashanah. You know what I mean? That's the New Year, you know, or the Feast of Trumpets, which we call it. And you make noise and you celebrate all day. On get, There was a leaf falling, twirling to the ground, you know. Uh, on Gail's post, we you, she got us uh, blowing the chauffeur. I cheated. I put the toy horn behind it and blew. I already gave you a spoiler alert. But if you go to her, Torah is the word, or uh, uh, while all of life, you know, you like her stuff also. It doesn't kill you people to like a page. If you're liking what you're hearing now, turn right now, hit the like, hit the share, hit the subscribe right now. Keep up to date with what's coming with all of this. Now I'm getting all glitchy, you know. But remember that, you know, hit the pages. But it's a lot of fun. You know, you'll see us blowing the show for and Gail explains a little bit, you know. So, but check that out, too. It's good to go. Good to see other stuff, learn stuff. Whoop, whoo. Get back from all there. There you go. Now, I like I was saying, I was going to be doing stuff with uh, pallets to make furniture. I like this setup. That was kind of a setup I was going to try to do this year. Uh, I'm not too crazy about the back part with how the back is. They just used the whole pallet. I don't know if I would have done that. I would probably took the legs off and just kept the back. But that's a great... I'm, I'm six foot two, and I like to stretch out, and that's perfect. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a perfect setup for me. And um, so that's something I, I saved and I got diagrams drawn for and everything. So that's going to happen one day soon. And you, you all experience it with me, too. You all experience it with me. This was a picture I was going to send my friend Rose. Like I tell you, like I like breaking her chops with stuff. This would make a good profile picture for her. And all you single men, go, go on there and say stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I don't get those. I got no damn viewers anyway. But this is a fun picture. I thought about it. She's into dragons. Why is it a dragon with a pirate? I have no damn idea. So I just thought it was a funny. It was like stupid, sexy woman type thing with a pirate and a dragon. But that's a good profile pic for Rose. <laughs> then I and here's another little bat one again. He says, "I'm I am the knight. Fear me, you know." So he must have been one of the ones that flew out of the pen with the other bat cat bats <laughs> and she's uh let me move her that let me move me there you know that's uh wonder woman for you people that don't uh watch uh the superhero stuff and i bet now the hell you will that's the new wonder woman i don't even know her real name in, in real life but that that's the wonder woman you know but go go there now I got friends who are preppers and all of this stuff. This, this is a good thing to take note, especially winter's coming. 
a lot of you guys like to go to flea markets and sales like I do. You'll see these old stoves, uh, cast iron stoves, from time to time uh, being sold. Buy one. They, and especially if you're a prepper, you need that. You know what I mean? And if you're a prepper and you didn't ever thought of it, I don't know why you're prepping. You know what I mean? Don't write nothing bad to me because I don't care. You know, because that is an essential thing. That will always make your food. That will make your water clean because you would boil water on it. You can keep a fire lit. Use less wood because the ashes will be there to, uh, to smolder and re-spark up the burn. So that is an essential thing. That's why even people who lived in the pioneer days throughout this country... They had a stove. Benjamin Franklin changed the stove, you know, made it better, but it was still the same principle. They cooked on one side and did every, uh, burnt the wood on another. But get a stove, find a cast iron stove, make one. It, you can make, there's all sorts of stuff online how to make one. You know what I mean? You could take old barrels and all that. You know, they don't last long, but you can make it. You know what I mean? But if you see one and it's cheap enough and you can afford it and you're prepping or looking to prep or whatever, get it. That's that's a must must because it'll do so much for you in the cold. It will give you heat. You, like I said, it will cook your food. It will clean your water. You know what I mean? And that's just the beginning. You know, you'll save you in wear and tear and cutting wood. You know, it, it'll do tons of stuff, you know, tons of stuff. You can also barter with it then if you had to, you know. So it's a it's a great, great thing to keep in mind, you know. Um, there's all sorts of little ones, pot belly ones, long ones. There's all so sorts of ones, but it's a good thing to have. You know what I mean? So I seen that and I thought about people who I knew prep and everything else and I thought they were like, like that and... Some of them don't realize that, you know. And the other thing, if you want to be a prepper and all this stuff, don't worry about buying a gun. You know what I mean? Yeah, you need a gun for protection. Fine, whatever. But you're going to waste a lot of ammo. Get a BB gun. Get a pellet gun. You get all the pellets. You get like a whole case of 500 pellets for like a few bucks. You know, and you can hunt all the squirrels and rabbits and all that stuff you want. It'll kill. It'll be able to kill that. You know, so a pellet gun... Pump action is the best to get because you don't you never find cartridges, but the pump action pellet guns That's, a, that's another thing. I'm not even a prepper and and, and I follow these things because You need these things. I have a kind of a pellet gun type of thing. I use that to chase some uh, Coyotes away from here. I might pop them one in the butt just to keep them running You know what I mean, I don't believe in killing them because even though they attack my animals, but I try to, not unless I look like they're rabbit or something like that coming at full force here. But if I have to just chase them away, I just do stuff like that to them. And it chases them away. They don't come back around. You know, but those are two simple things you got on the house to learn there. You know, a nice wood fireplace and get yourself a pellet gun. You know what I mean? Because you ain't going to have bullets. You know what I mean? But the pellets, you can stop. You can get a little round of pellets like that and stop. Stack them up sky high, dirt cheap, and you could hunt the rest of your life. Hell, every day, you know. <laughs> so, but keep that in mind. Just I diverse, you know. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know this, but I'm gonna move myself up so everybody can read it. It says in the early 1800s, the handles on a casket was a huckle, you know, and the person that carried it was a bearer, you know. So, Doc Holliday says, I'll be a huckleberry, bearer, not huckleberry. So, we call it, now we call it a Paul bearer. So, he, was he saying, I'll be a huckleberry, or I'll be a huckle, huckleberry? Now, it sounds like berry to me, but I kind of heard that say that the, the caskets it was something like a huckle, but I think he was saying huckleberry, meaning that he'll be your you know, sweet treat or whatever. You know what I mean? But it does make it sound good, too, saying I'll be your huckleberry, you know. But I like to see the actual script to see what the hell was said or was supposed to be said. You know, if it was huckleberry, then it's huckleberry. You know, you know, you know so I don't know. I mean, I know, this is the first meme I seen with that that I can recall. Now, I'm not saying it was others or not others. I don't know. You know, but 
That's the first one I seen. So it's something to look into. You know, you're thinking about stuff sitting down. Was it Huckleberry or or, or Huckleberry? I'm gonna. They're always showing the me the clips on online. I'm gonna look re listen real careful and see what it says. You know, I was wrong about a star uh, Star Trek one or Star Wars. What the hell is Star Wars? I re <laughs> I was forget about it, but the damn was I wrong. Yeah. But I still think they changed the words. <laughs> but that's something to look into. I thought that was a. Uh, I have movie buff friends also, you know what I mean? And I think they will get a kick out of that and look into I don't even know if they know that one. So it's an interesting fact, or maybe not a fact. My friend George, no, who sent me this? George? I think it was George sent me this. You know, Soylent Green Day, but, you know, he got it in a can. It was supposed to be little crackers, so this poster is kind of wrong or something. But Friday is Soylent Green Day, you know. I had a Soylent Green one. Uh, I did not too long ago on one of my other Screaming Mimi shows, showing him going down the conveyor belt, you know, with all the soil and green things, you know, so, I don't know, so that's, you know, that's kind of funny, you know, so, <laughs> you never seen soil and green, go watch it, and believe me, everything you would see nowadays, everything is soil and green, shit, <laughs> You know, this I haven't tried yet, but I had a blast at the grocery store today. I asked the young checkout girl if those were front or back legs. She didn't know and I and said, I'll go ask when she got back and said, not funny. So I know some friends of mine who were kind of ball busters, chop busters, whatever you want to call them. I know they uh, uh, say this to someone before I do because I really want to see their expression. Because, yeah, some people are kind of looney toony, you know, and I want to ask them, is those are front legs or back legs? And j just to see what they say, you know. I haven't had a chance to to, to ask that, you know what I mean? Because no one asks me, do I need help yet while I'm looking at chicken? But, it's uh, you know, as soon as I do, I'm going to be looking. I know how I'm going to do it. I'm going to look at it, and they're going to say, well, what are you looking for? Uh, I'm going to say, I'm trying to find out if these were the front legs or back legs. They ain't marked, you know, and just to see what they say. You know what I mean? They're probably going to think I'm on crack. You got to say, what the hell's wrong with you, mister? <laughs> you know, so it's, it ought to be kind of fun. Well, the dogs are antsy inside. You want to let them out. Yeah, I think my dogs are going to come out. They hear me talking out here. There they go. Get out of here. Leave me alone. You know, they got to, they don't miss a trick with nothing. You know, now, this is an interesting one. I never knew New Jersey had a film film festival awards thing. I never knew this. You know what I mean? I'm born and bred there, you know, and I don't know how many years they were doing it, but th I thought this was great, you know. Uh, you know, it's the film festival awards for, like, the horror movies they make in New Jersey, you know. So, I thought this was great. If you get a chance, you know, like the best, you know, New York, New Jersey horror film was, you know, Cooking with Fish. There's something wrong with Paul. The movie The Path, I'm taking for granted that's the Path train station. Tales of the Narrow Bridge, the Wine Word Devil, which I don't know, then Prime Cuts. And then there's other movies, you know. So I never knew there was m movies like this. Hang on a minute. You guys want to go do something? Good. Give me that. That's mine. Go down. Go, 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 go down. Yeah, see? Now you're happy, and I'm happy. They're happy. I'm happy. We're all happy. <laughs> they're worse than kids, I'm telling you. But they're like, well, it should have gave you a second to look at other stuff. You know what I mean? But, you know... A lot of these actors and all, they're up and coming. Some of them make really cool stuff, you know what I mean? Um, if you knew uh, The Toxic Avenger, that was a New Jersey one. That's a big cult classic one. Uh, probably the biggest one there is, you know. Uh, the uh, high school one, you know, where Class of Newcomb High. Class of Newcomb High. That's filmed in Jersey City also, down there by St. Francis Hospital and all. So there, there, there's a quite there's quite a few uh, cult classics that were done in Jersey City and New Jersey, and but I never knew they had these awards, and I was really shocked. 
And they have a page on Facebook, too. That's where, you know, I kind of found this true, you know. And I thought it was pretty cool. You know what I mean? I never knew that. And I, wow. Now, talking about Jersey City one more time, that's in downtown Jersey City. Well, up toward McGinley Square area. That's called Chicken Delight. Man, you could take all your Kentucky Fried Chicken, your popcorn uh, Popeye's chicken, any of that damn chicken. Nothing, nothing, nothing holds to Chicken Delight. Chicken Delight, bar none, is the chicken to eat. I swear, you got it on a big round paper plate with another big round paper plate on top with your French crinkle fries and, and a piece of a little biscuit and uh, your chicken. Oh, it was awesome. Awesome. I could taste it right now. It's a taste that never goes away. Now, I'm not even saying that in a bad way. <laughs> yeah. But it's the world's best chicken. Chicken Delight. It was Don't Cook Tonight called Chicken Delight. And, wow, that was awesome food. Awesome. I still remember to this day, always will. If I get a chance to ever go back to Jersey City, um... That's literally the first one of the first places I'm eating at. And it says since 1965 it's been there. You know, so wow, I'm 57. So that's been around 57 years. What does that say about it, people? I mean, I mean, yeah, you got Kentucky Fried Chickens and all that all around the place, too. But that that's classic. I mean, I don't even know if they're anywhere else. I mean, the only place I ever knew they were in Jersey City and I think New York. So there might be other ones. I don't know, but... That is awesome food. Awesome. Yeah, I just, when I seen that, it brought tears to my eyes. I cried. And you want the world's best pizza? You go to Helen's Pizza on Newark Avenue in Jersey City. That's the, the that, it's the best, you know. I don't want to hear about no three brothers, five brothers, one brother, my cousin. The hell with all that shit. You know, this was Helen's. Helen's Pizza in downtown Jersey City. The world's best pizza ever made on the planet Earth. Then I thought this was kind of funny. <laughs> Talking about work. Me arriving at work while uh, willing to be a better person than one hour later, you're like a grumpy Tyrannosaurus Rex. You know, yeah. <laughs> that That's kind of like that Gary Busey one where he goes in, he's smiling, he comes out after eight hours like, what the hell was that? You know, it's like, yeah, you, you know, jobs drive me crazy, plain English. I mean, jobs drive me crazy. Then... We got uh, the goths, they're behind me, aren't they? The black cats are the goths. Like I said, I got four of them. You know, <laughs> you know I don't know why people make fun of these goths people, you know. They're, they don't bother no one. They think they're vampires or something, but they don't bother nobody. You know, I remember years ago, goths were like the ones that like living the Renaissance stuff. That, those were goths back then. You know, they thought they... I don't know if you remember that uh, Beauty and the Beast. You know, that was like their following with that. They wanted to dress in the medieval nightwear stuff. You know, they, they were into that shit, you know. So, I mean, then somehow they went to this black and now, then, now they're black with tattoos, wearing black and tattoos, and they're goths. So I don't know what the hell it's changing into. But the goths I knew, they were... They did it like that. They thought they were like in the 16th century or something, you know. <laughs> you know, that's how I knew Gots, you know, then they went to that wearing the black a little bit, but now it's like black with tattoos, you know, and they're Gots, so I, I don't know what they're morphing into, it's, that's not, yeah, that's people wearing tattoos with black clothes, you know, but that's Gots, you know, I mean, like I said, I, I don't really know any more of them these days, but um, I knew some back in the days, you know, and they were cool, I mean, Good educated people. They just dress different. That's about that's I can tell you about them. Yeah, you know I mean, people are like oh, I don't like them. They're goths, you know. And I'm like, they're not stupid. They're pretty educated. We be surprised. You know, what I mean, I mean, yeah, like I said, they dress a little different, but you know, they they well, I'm a cool. You know, they try to help people the best they can, like everybody else. So. Like I said, they just got their own fashion sense. <laughs> I don't wear it, you know, but I don't know. I kind of like the capes at times. I, I'm a capey person. Then I, I hear there's another one with the Adams Family. I'm I'm really curious. I don't have the Netflix to uh, see this yet, but um, 
I think it might be okay. I don't know. I, I haven't really heard nothing bad about her bad reviews about the monsters though. The monsters didn't go over that big. Well, I didn't think it was going to, you know, because uh, they got like I was like me and my wife was talking. They got to play it as themselves. They can't try to be her, you know, uh, Ed Gwynn and all these people. They got to do it themselves, you know. That will sell the character, and the character they pick has to kind of have that reputation of the character they're going to be playing. That's what sold it with the Munsters, you know, with with, with Gwyn and all of them, because that's who they were, you know, and they're putting actors to be like this. And she just, what brought that conversation all about was she just showed me they're going to make another Tarzan movie. It ain't going to happen, people, you know. I, you know, Tarzan was Johnny Weissmiller. The old black and white Tarzan into the, you know, kind of into the car. He was Tarzan. You know, did he look like a Tarzan? No. But the way he could pull it off made him Tarzan. He had slick back hair. Who the hell's running around in the jungle with slick back hair? I mean, you got to look at certain things that made it. And they're going to try to make it either or, or stupid or you have to do it straight. You know what I mean? Where you got to make him now. Not going back what the hell he was in 1820. It's, a, it's just stupid. If you're going to do it, make it now. This would be a Tarzan now the way he would look. Not with super long hair. Get the hell rid of all that idea. Give him the fixed hair. Give him neat hair. That's what was selling. That's what it was all about, you know? It wasn't that he, you know... It, they're missing the whole point. I mean, they really, I, you know, I don't know. They really need to talk with people before they do these things. But like, I, but going back to the Adams family here, just with John Adams, you know, uh, not John Adams. Uh, yeah, well, uh, oh, what the hell is his name? Anyway, the guy who played Goldman Adams in 64, John Austin, you know, in 64, and then uh, Paul in 91, they were great. You know, because that's the way you seen Gomez Adams. You know, that's kind of, and he played it his own way also, Paul. That's why people really liked him as it. Now, the Fester was done wrong, if you ask me. You know, um, Jack, Jack Cogan in the old one, the 64, compared to, you know... Um, the 91 guy, I forget the actor's name over there. Christopher Lloyd, I think, no, yeah, I think something like that. You know, the way he played it was too stupid. You know, I, you know, I don't think he played him right. Because the old one, he just played it like he was a man. It was natural. He did not do it natural. That's what didn't, didn't sell it. Because you had to play it like how he would. And he should have played it like it was him, but he didn't, you know what I mean, I mean, that's what was wrong, and that's why he didn't really sell, you know what I mean, his character, but like, the Morticia Adamses, I think the 91 version, she was too witchy, just a little too witchy, but other than that, yeah, it worked great, you know, but now how they're going to do these, I, I don't know, you know, like I said, I really haven't heard nothing, and I'm really curious to see it. Really, really curious. But like I said, I seen clips of the monsters. It, it was just no, 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 no. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, this is a good one. It says, Bl "Don't blame technology." In 1916, people lined. They didn't. Have oh man, my. Numbers are going all over the place. Sorry about that. Early today, the Wi-Fi went down. Everything went down. This, this is life in the woods here, man. Talking about being a prepper. You better forget about ever having cell phones and shit like that. You know, because it is what it is. But it looks like it's all up and running now. But it gets real glitchy. But it's out of my control, people. That's how rustic I do this stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm just writing you on the phone, man. You know. So, anyway, back to this. Don't blame technology. They really don't. Just blame people. People were reading the papers in 1916, and that was a kind You had the newspaper boy. Hey, get your news. You got the hot flash and all this shit. You know, 
people did that. That was the thing. Now, in 2016, they're lined up looking at a phone. So what's really different? It's getting... He could be checking, the guy, the first guy could be checking his mail. The other guy could be reading a news article, etc., etc., down the line. So, what has changed? Just the way you look at it. Really? Holding a big paper? You know, a big paper? Or holding a little cell phone? It's the same thing. You know, so people putting it down or not? Eh. Back then, you would have a radio. You know, you would, you would... Probably, well, not in 1916. You would have maybe a bigger radio, if it was around then, but a radio, you know. And then, well, even like, if you went to the 20s, and uh, say the 30s, you would have a radio, you know what I'm saying? So you would have the earpiece in, you know, because they didn't have wireless, you know. You would have an earpiece in so you could hear the radio. And then you would have a newspaper. You had all these other things that still distracted you. Now everything is in one little thing. So not much has changed. It's just... The way we do it, you know, and people complain technology and all this. No, you had the same shit then. It was just done different. Now it's all in one place that you could see it. Can it take up more of your time? Yes, you know, but it's all in one location now. It's all in one device. I don't have to go get a paper, go look at a radio, go look at a TV, look at a hear the motorcycle go by. You know what I mean? He should be reading the paper. You know, you don't have to run or listen to a record and all. It was several different things you would use. Now it's all in one. So, really don't blame the technology. You were doing the same thing. You were just using different things to do it. Now you're doing it all in one, you know. So, I mean, uh, I think this is a great post. Great for social people, you know, trying to. Teach people stuff, young people, old people. Young people show old people. Old people show and say, you ain't doing nothing different than we did. Well, you just got it all in one thing. That's the only damn difference. Like I said, back in 1916, you would have a, a, a record player. You know what I mean? You would have a radio. Uh, TV wasn't out then. But, you know, later on, you would have a TV. You know what I mean? You would have a, a bands, you know, or like the music. It's all different now, you know what I mean? So, it's all in one thing. So, people shouldn't get too upset blaming, you know, young people or anybody. It's all in one place now. I don't even need to sit and watch a TV. I can watch my TVs on the phone, you know, my, my TV show. So, go figure that, you know. So, keep that in mind, you know. When you older people blame younger people for stuff, you're doing the same. You did the same things back then as now. Even in 1960. Until now, because you would go home, watch your favorite TV shows, you would buy a newspaper, listen to the radio, you know, play records. You would do those four things, which now you could do on your phone. Hey, but you had just four other things to do with, and read a book. So if you read a book or magazines and stuff like that. So there's five different things you did right there. And you had a telephone. So that would be six. Six different things. Different things that you now do in one. There is a meme with that. I got to find that damn meme. There is a meme that shows all these things. They're like huddled around a cell phone and like they're all mad at it. But yeah, it was the same thing. You just used more stuff. So it didn't look like you were doing all of that at one place. So good post. This is what I like and I miss. I miss Radio Shack. They used to sell these things where you could make a... Uh, a radio, <laughs> one. I think it was like Geiger counters and test strobes and all of this stuff. You just moved the wires around. It came with an instruction book, but this helped people make stuff. I, I very sad this country let Radio Shacks close. Mines closed with it because young guys, young women could have bought all the electronics. I used to buy a lot of different things there at Radio Shack. And they're gone. You can't find stuff. You went to be able to talk to someone about stuff, what it can do and can't do. Guys had some general knowledge. So you learned a lot from there. It To me, when the radio shacks closed, technology in this country slowed down. You know, because you, have got, you really got nowhere to get shit. You ain't buying that stuff at Walmart. You know, you can buy it online, but you, you got to know what you're buying. But a lot of stuff, 
that was invented and made was made from trial and error from stuff bought from damn Radio Shack. Literally. Because if it didn't work, you went back there and you got another piece. You got another piece. If that broke, you bought another one. Where are you doing this now? You know, so much in the invention is, you know, in the, in, in, ingenuity is wasted now because there is no avenue to get like this. It's 150 things in one. A, a, a young person, boy, girl, whatever, you know what I mean, get, gets that at a young age, it opens their mind. You know what I mean? Because now you want to learn more stuff with this and all. Now you got no one doing shit. You know? And then they go, oh, everything is from overseas. Well, bring stuff back here like that. That's one of the things. I don't get into much politics. I was really hoping for Trump to get done. He wanted to bring back the vocational schools and all in this country. We need it. You ain't getting plumbers. You ain't getting carpenters. You ain't getting computer builders in, in programs. Where are you learning this stuff? It's very hard in college. It costs a lot of money. You know, but jobs like that to learn basic stuff, you learned in book tech schools, and they ain't really around no more. And then they go, oh, they got no work. No, because we, we fucking got rid of it all. So it's like, so keep that in mind. That's a great thing. I I really wish you can get, you could probably buy them online. You know what I mean? But without going those extra steps, because you ain't made stuff that made a light bulb. It made stuff work. You touched it. That's the thing when you touch it. That's like when even when I did sales, one of the main things, and I was a Kirby vacuum salesman and damn proud of it. I was a fan master. Almost made AD and all that, but I turned it down. It was other issues in life. But one thing you learned as a salesperson with that, you put it in the customer's hand. You let them touch it. When they touch it and work with it, it's sold. You know, you can't just, selling isn't telling. Like me telling you this, selling isn't telling. You got a young person, you're trying to teach them, it, it doesn't work. I, I know <laughs> a couple of my old friends who still sold, sold Kirby's probably, probably hit the deck laughing. But that's the truth. And they know it too. Selling isn't telling. You put it in their hands, bam. When I used to shampoo their rugs, I had people take their shoes off and walk to a barefoot. That sold them. They felt it. They seen it. You know, it, there's there's things, you know, but that's why we lost a lot in this country and a lot of things are so wacko. You know, we got to bring stuff back to people, young people, middle-aged people. Let them learn stuff again. There's none of this no more. You know what I mean? There's, there's none of this in this country. That's the problem. You know, people can say all this other shit, but these are the, the problems. You know, you don't... They're not learning stuff. They're not being adventurous to get out there and do it, to try to w fail or succeed. Just keep going. But keep that in mind. Christmas time is coming. <laughs> See if you can find And that's what everybody got those things at Christmas time or their birthday. They would get something from Radio Shack, the classic gift, you know. But I really wish they never closed them stores down. I think there's one open in Canada or something. I, you know, something like that. There's one or two in Canada, and that's it. But... You know, I think they're online, but like I said, you don't got that one-on-one -on -one with a person, you know, to get stuff. You know, you don't got that one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, talking about salmon cakes. I should have realized I had this one here. It said, going back to that, so if you remember, so you might want to uh, remember the timeline on this right here. It says, you know, Canada Libby salmon, you know, this says cracker crumbs. It says to take some uh, rich crackers or something, crumble them up. Two eggs, salt, and pepper. You know, flake and bone the salmon. That's why I told you get the little pieces out. You know, mix with the crumbs, eggs, and, and seasoning. Form into patties and brown in pan. Serve, uh, uh, on, served on grilled slice of Libby's pineapple. You can put a piece of pineapple on there. Oh, I got to think about that. <laughs> did everybody ever go out and buy a pineapple since the last show I did? I did the pineapple. I got... Uh, Come October, I'm going to do a couple of pumpkins, too. So, no, I ain't going to use my... I got a little knife. I'm going to maybe do a face on it. I don't do nothing. It's just a basic pumpkin. Have fun, people. So, you'll know when that's coming. I'll, I'll, I'll post ads when it's coming, so this way people know. Ah, let me... I'll be closing off here soon. 
But this is a classic thing. You know, uh, you'll be surprised. Going back, this, I didn't realize I had so much on here about stuff that can help people. This is a shoe sizer. You would put your heel, like on the top that says, put your left heel there. Now, you don't put both feet on it at the same time. So you're standing and you're going to fall the hell over. It's one foot at a time. You sit down and you stand up, you know. <clears throat> but you uh, put your left, well, well, let's do it with the right foot. You put your right heel in the back where it says right heel. So you put your right foot there. Then you have a bump right below your big toe. That's where that little, the small piece that slides up and down will go to there, okay? And then you would push the flat piece that's over here on the right up against your foot, and that will give you thickness, it's like whether you're a D, an E, a wide, or whatever. And then when you got your foot on the right side, it'll go up to the other side, and it'll tell you what size shoe you wear. You know, and then the other thing deals like uh, with an, um, kind of an arch thing. But as long as you got your width and your length, you can wear a comfortable shoe. You'll be surprised how many people I've met wearing the wrong shoes. I, I, and people who sell shoes in shoe stores don't even know how to use a damn uh, a foot scale. I mean, it's sad. But I've helped people with this, you know, in the shoe store, because they're like my feet. I'm like, what size? They don't know. And I would look for it. They would have them there, but they don't know how to use them. And I would show them. And i say, now here, try this shoe. And they're like, oh, my God, it, it fits. I'm like, yeah, this is what you should be wearing. You know what I mean? People buy shoes that are way too big to wear or too small, and their feet hurt. Please use the shoe sizer thing here when you go. If you don't know your shoe size, ask the person in the store. They should know how to use If they don't know, I just told you how. Put your, put your right heel at the bottom of the right thing that says right heel. Press it up against your feet because you're going to have the other little, little piece up against the little round piece that's just below your toe. You know, big toe, just below the toenail, there's like a, you know, where it goes back to your foot, you know. Here, I'm going to show you. We're going to, this part right here, you know, let me get my foot right there. This is the part you're going to put that part on. So, that, that'll that show your foot, you know. Put that in that, and when you've got your foot up there at the top, it'll say like 10, 10 and a half. The marks in between, it means half. So that'd be half, and then whatever witness, uh, witness, whatever. <laughs> Hallelujah, brother. Where you choose? <laughs> witness that that's a damn wrong side. That's why your feet are aching, you know. But the, the different width, <laughs> you know. So uh, and most people are a D or an E, and then when you start getting to the wide, that'd be wide widths, you know. What I mean, but you do this to your feet, your feet will be so much comfortable. And you'll see, you, you know, get your shoes. And I even I've heard stories from people who sold shoes saying people came in, they wanted shoes, but they didn't know what size. Then you look at the size they're wearing. A person who takes like a nine, you know, size nine, they're wearing or nine medium, you know, nine narrow, I should say, you know. And they they need a, a size 11 wide, you know, and they're saying they fucking feet hurt. Well, you ain't even near wearing the, well, I just grabbed you. Well, you got people wearing shit too big because they need a wide, but they don't know the length, so they're buying like, they're, they're like a 10 wide, but they're wearing a 13, you know, because, oh, well, it's wide enough. Yeah, but it, it, that's why you can't walk right. You're wearing fucking clown shoes. So, weight, your feet is very important, people. And this is one of the most important things anybody, and I mean anybody, should know how to use in, in buying shoes. You should know your shoe size at a drop of a hat. Me, I'm ten and a half D, I know, or E, E or D, because some of them are so close, you know. But I'm a ten and a half, you know what I mean, regular width. I don't need wide, you know. But if you don't know your size, learn it, you know. That's important in your life. Then, 
I'm going to leave it years old on this note here. Merry Thanksgiving Ween. You know, because all the stuff is in the stores right now being sold, you know, and it's a madhouse. You know, but uh, it's, it, don't buy Christmas stuff now. Unless you see something you really like, buy it. You know what I mean? But I don't, I don't care anymore if they come out too early. It's sad because they had a lot of time to still get stuff. But everybody's trying to make money. But if, if you see something that you like for Thanksgiving or Christmas and it's out in July, buy it. You know, so what? Put, yeah, you don't got to use it. Put it to the side. You'll have it when the damn time comes, you know. Me, I got our stuff the best I can in tubs. You know, I got a tub for Christmas stuff. Well, not even no, no more Christmas stuff, but tub for Thanksgiving, tub for su coat. Gail's buy su coat stuff. That's like a, a little hut type of thing we, we celebrate in. You know, uh, she buys that stuff in July when they have all the luau stuff out. Because that's the only time to find it. You know what I mean? And so we buy stuff then, we put it on the side, and we have it, you know. So keep that in mind, you know. So don't, don't get all worked up. It's it's all out right now. Don't look at it then. You know what I mean? I see stuff, and some I look at, some I don't. So, I mean, but some things are harder to find later because they do sell out. So if you see something, buy it. Don't complain. Big deal. You know what I mean? It's, hey, stores got to do what they got to do. You know, and they might be having more stuff to come in, and they're trying to get rid of stuff. So, and then some of the stuff they sell now is stuff from last year they never sold. So they got it out now to try to push it out to make room for stuff so they don't have to re-put it out anywhere, you know. So keep that in mind, too. But I thought this was funny because everybody gets all worked up with the holidays. You know, you want to decorate your pumpkin like a like a Santa Claus, go ahead. You know, Santa Claus, Pilgrim, you know, but it don't matter. You know what I mean? So it's out in the stores, you know, it, it, it is what it is, you know. But uh, me, I see something I like, I buy it, so who cares? But this was great. I uh, really appreciate everybody tuning in. Oh, let me try to get me back. I don't know how I'm going to get me back. Uh, I'm here somewhere. I'm pulling the pieces here. Uh, we're still here. Hello. There we go. Now I'm back. Hooray. <laughs> I dropped my stuff. Some stuff gets a little bit of pain. But we get it figured out. Okay. Now we're good. Now we're rolling. But I appreciate it. You like my cat shirt? That's what I say now. See that there? My cat's looking at the moon. Here's my little dog. Get in here, pumpkin head. Get off my chair. Here. You'll be proud of you. You'll be on TV. Here. That's Bucky the Wonder Dog. Right? You're going to do stuff. You tell everybody, tune in. Like the channel. Subscribe to the channel. All of that. You know, we appreciate everybody tuning in. But we got a lot of fun stuff coming up in October here. You know, I'm going to uh, try to do a couple of pumpkins. Uh, Gail's going to talk about Suco. We're going to be celebrating that. Uh, we're going to maybe decorate the outside deck here a little bit for Sukkot. So we're going to have some stuff going on with that. So it's going to be a lot of fun. A little educational. A lot of fun. I still got Screaming Mimi's every Sunday afternoon. Uh, Sunday, Sunday afternoon. 
<laughs> every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. So, like I said, like the pages and all. We're working on a lot. I got some shirts I'm going to be making up um, for the holidays. You know, this is how we're trying to make our living. You know what I mean? So, things are what they are, you know. Will they be Christmas ones in October? Hell yeah. So, don't worry about it. You know, just buy it, you know. But keep that in mind. It's a lot, of, a lot of fun, you know. Um, you got any questions, just comment me on Facebook, you know what I mean? And, you know, I answer them or I answer them next week or something like that. Uh, next Saturday is going to be very interesting. We're going to be walking in a parade. You know, it'll be a small little parade, but we're going to be walking in it. I'm going to live stream that as I'm doing it. So, I think everybody will like that. Gail will be there uh, representing... Uh, Tora is the word, so it should be a lot of fun, you know what I mean, and hopefully a couple of my other friends who do like cosplay will be there doing it, that ought to be a really killer, because they do some excellent cosplay stuff, but thank you everybody, thank you for tuning in, uh, God bless you, stay safe, like I say, like the page, follow the page, subscribe to the page, it costs you nothing, zero, it don't cost you nothing but two seconds of your time, it means a lot to us that People are seeing this and enjoying it. So keep that in mind on all our pages and, and you know, on, on Facebook, on Twitch, and on um, uh, YouTube. I got Instagram and TikTok. I'm, I'm working on that stuff a little bit. But I like the Twitch crowd. You know, there's a lot of great people there, young people and all, who, who like what I talk about and have fun with and joke with. You know, so tell your other friends and all. I meant to do a post on... Uh, there one thing uh, saying I was going live to let people know, but I thank everybody from there. You know, Facebook, you, friends tell friends, say, hey, man, you got to check this guy out. He's kind of funny, you know. Look at my past videos. If you don't see him on Twitch, go to YouTube or Facebook and find it. It's under the same name, uh, Bandana J, you know. So check those out. Have fun. God bless you. Have a great weekend. And I'm going to let you all go here for now. Bye-bye.